Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us at the Microsoft Power BI UK user group. I'm your host, Leon Gordon, and as always, we're back with what we hope will be another fantastic session to help you learn more about Power BI and come together as a community. On the subject, I would love to hear where you're all joining us from. I can already see that we have Andy joining us from Deepest Somerset. So, Andy, welcome. And we also have, um, it looks like, Arginis joining us from Spain as well. So good, after good afternoon to you in Spain and thank you for joining us. Um, as always, we want this to be a wonderfully interactive session, so please do feel free to ask questions throughout. Like I say, let us know where you're joining us from and also please let us know we can learn from this session within the chat. So in today's session, um, we're going to be joined by Adam Aspin, and we're going to be taking a look at Power BI themes. Now, Adam is an independent business intelligence consultant who is based in the United Kingdom, and he has worked with SQL Server for over 25 years before now focusing on the Power BI ecosystem. During this time, he has developed several dozen BI and analytics systems based on the Microsoft Data Platform, and he is also a very renowned author. Adam, thank you very much for joining us. Hello, and thanks for inviting me, Leon. No problem at all. Absolute pleasure to have you with us today and very much looking forward to today's session as well. Me too. Excellent. Um, I'll just hand over to you um, in terms of if you'd like to share your screen with us. Um, I'll just go in the background and start moderating some of the comments and welcoming those that are joining us. And I'll hand over to you um, for your session. Thanks very much, Leon. So. First things first, can everybody, well, everybody largely being uh, Leon, I suppose, for, for, for the voice, but otherwise, hopefully, you can see my screen. Yes, we can indeed. Great. So, what I want to talk about is themes, theme files in Power BI, which I started to get into a couple of years ago found them initially very disconcerting. And the more I ended up developing theme files, the more I really did end up believing that they are an investment in time and energy, but the time savings you can make when you develop good Power BI themes is unbelievable. My classic example is you might spend 20% of your time formatting in Power BI, themes can probably get rid of 90% of that, which for me leaves you with 50% more time to do other things and other things that are potentially a lot more interesting. So I can get very passionate about themes, which is a bit geeky, but hey, that's why I'm here. And I hope that you'll end up sharing this enjoyment and appreciation of themes. Um, Leon's already talked talked about me, but so yes, freelance consultant contractor. I've uh, been so long in data and analytics that it's etched on my Zimmer frame. I've currently written six books for A Press, three and more coming out with BPB uh, in India. And <clears throat> oh, I'm up to about 80 articles on SQL Server Central and Simple Talk. And if you need to get hold of me, Leon's sharing my LinkedIn link. Otherwise, here's the email. And if I if someone has a technical theme based question, obviously I'll try and reply. Can't guarantee, but I'll do my best. Okay, themes in Power BI, what are they? You may already know, but I prefer to start from the, the beginning, start at the ground level and say, it's a way of predefining the formatting of all standard Power BI visuals. And I mean all the built-in visuals. Why would you do this? two core reasons. One I've already mentioned, you can save an awful lot of time. And secondly, standardization. If you are a large corporation that needs standards in Power BI, just like you do say in PowerPoint, <clears throat> you can enforce those standards very easily with theme files. If you're a consultancy and want to make sure that your look and feel and added value is transmitted, Theme files are your friend. So how do you do them? Well, there's an initial level, which I'll start with, but we'll gloss over the initial stuff pretty quickly, which is using the Power BI desktop interface. There's some things you can do there, but the essential of 
theme files is in JSON files. You will end up, if you get into themes, doing a lot of work in JSON files. So I realize a lot of people will have seen themes. They've been around for about three years. Let me just show the principle. So I think in the tradition of uh, cookery shows everywhere, and I'm hoping you can now see a very simple Power BI uh, screen. You can apply themes. This is ground level nursery slopes, bunny slopes, as I gather they say uh, across the Atlantic, by going into the view menu and saying, oh, in these themes, here's a set of colors, or let's go straight into something slightly more advanced. You can browse for a JSON theme file and I, which ones have I got? Da, 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 one called, oh, edgy theme. That normally means it looks disgusting, but the principle being instantly changed a whole load of formatting. Now, whole load isn't a very technical term. So in greater detail, every single attribute that you can format in the visualizations pane by clicking on the visual and going into formatting, absolutely everything in every one of these cards can be pre-formatted. Well, absolutely everything, 99%. There might be lawyers listening. Uh, you can go in and say, I want to define in the theme file, column headers, well, everything you can see there, and 99% of everything you can see in every single card, which has, well, A, the advantage of showing my utter lack of taste in color, but secondary is that you can, whenever you create now in your Power BI dashboard work, a, a, t a table, it will automatically format itself. So I can go onto another page. I've got the background, create a table, uh, add, this is a, one of my dummy data sets, but go in and say, oh, let's add the country name and the the, the, the gross profit. The point being, not that we haven't made enough profit, but that the table has formatted itself instantly based on everything that's, <coughs> excuse me, in the theme file. So that is why I and other people get excited uh, about themes, because instant formatting, as you saw, three or four clicks, and there you were with just about everything you wanted formatted. And it's not a straitjacket. This changes the formatting, but there's nothing to stop you doing custom formatting over the top of the theme file that you've created. So you're not locking yourself into something impossible. Now, themes have evolved in Power BI, and there are now roughly four different ways of doing themes. I won't read the slide, but let's say you've got a very simple way, which I will show you in Power BI Desktop, which is good for, say, titles and colors, but not much else. But it can save you, nonetheless, a lot of time and get you started when learning to use themes. Then there's what I would call a slight deviation, which is Microsoft have introduced classes for text and color, which allow you to format bits of text and uses of color, but they've decided where the text and color are applied. So I'll show you how you can do that, but it's not something I tend to use very often. The biggie is JSON, the third bullet point here, the JSON theme file creation and modification. This is the real nitty gritty. And okay, it gives you total control over every one of the built-in visuals down to the lowest level. But you're working on raw JSON. It can be very challenging to learn the, the JSON keywords that are applied in the JSON file. Often, you guessed it, don't map to what's in the formatting pane. So you have to learn the parallels or keep notes or just suffer. And there is a learning curve involved in this. And also, a complete theme file to describe, what is it, 38, 39 visuals is well over 4,000 lines of JSON. That is, yeah, heavy. But that's the price of complete control of your presentation. 
However, once you've actually dug through uh, all this treacle, you then reach total theme nirvana, because hidden to, to a great extent inside the way themes are done in Power BI is the way of simplifying the way themes work. So you can get all the advantages of total detail while reducing the size of the JSON by ooh, 70, 80% using what are called generic styles and cascading colors. And I'll be showing you that at the end, obviously, keep the best till last. And because I need to be logical about the four different approaches. So very quickly, quickly because it is limited in what it can do, how to do some theme work directly in Power BI Desktop. Well, do we have a Power BI Desktop? Well, yes. Um, I think what possible, ah, first thing about themes, you can't actually undo themes, but never mind. Supposing I wanted to change the theme, I can say, so, so into the view menu, into the themes pop up. One option, I don't know if people have used, but the option there is customize current theme. This takes a completely blank theme and allows you to say, ooh, I want to set the eight colors that are in the color palette. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and eight are the eight top row colors in any color palette when you call a pop-up. So you can say, I want to choose, I like blue, I may be useless at colors, but I like blue. Um, I want to choose a certain set of colors and then apply it. And if I've ever used this color somewhere, I've got a custom theme, so I probably won't see it. But Oh, yes, there it is in that chart. I have managed to define my own custom theme. Back in the customized current theme, there are other things you can define. You can like text where you can say, what's the general text to use? What, what do you want to use for titles for any visual? And for a few aspects of visuals, this one's particularly useful. You can standardize background, border, header, and the tooltip pop up. And you can set the page background and the wallpaper, and you can set the filter pane colors. So very simple, doesn't do an awful lot, but it can do, it can save you writing JSON. Because if you do change any of this, uh, supposing I decide to, I'll just do a change for, for argument's sake with a, a totally different uh, font color. I've now developed a theme and I can then save this and it's going to, it, sorry, Power BI Desktop, if I say save current theme, I will do this to show you, is going to write a theme file for me. It's going to create the background JSON. So let me call this test1json. I hope, I, I can't remember where I saved that. Comes again too fast. Did I put it in? Hooray in, in the folder I happen to have open. So if I switch to the file I just created, let me edit this with Notepad rather than Notepad plus plus rather than Notepad. And you can see, well, forget that. Okay, it's written out a whole load of JSON for me, including setting colors, etc. Saves me writing the JSON and it's appallingly formatted, so it means copying, pasting to a JSON format on the web and bringing it back again. But it's set various colors that I defined. However, that is not something I would probably ever suggest you do in real life. I'm just saying that it's there should you need it. So that's very much the first and first approach to themes, which you may or may not find useful. If you're only ever doing an introductory, a very light theme, useful, good starting point, but there's a lot more in themes. And the first, well, the second level of themes is to define theme classes. Now this is where, well, there's no interface stuff. This is where you have to love JSON. Now I won't say who loves JSON files, because the, the deafening silence is very disconcerting, but you have to be able to understand 
Jason. Obviously, if you've come from a, a really in-depth programming background, web background, you probably know and use JSON all the time. If you come more from a user angle, it can seem a bit disconcerting. So to help, I've handed over to Leon a whole set of theme files uh, ready prepared that he, is, he might even have shared already, but he will be sharing during the session. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You've got a, uh, some uh, technical swag to take away with you, including some theme classes. And what theme classes are, are ways of saying, here is a JSON file, curly brackets, give it away. Here's the name that I've chosen to give as a comment to this file. And here are the data colors that we've set, eight of them corresponding to the colors in the palette. Yes, I know there are 10 colors in the color palette, or palette, I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, but the first two, the uh, variations on a theme of black, variations on a theme of white can't be changed, but the other eight out of the 10 can. So a theme file is always going to have a name and it doesn't have to, but it's very unlikely not to have the definition of the color palette. Then if you're progressing with theme files and don't want to do 4,000 lines of JSON straight away on your first session with themes, you can define what are called classes. So you can say, mm, I want to define color classes for anything that's good. Anything that's, well, let's look at some of the examples. First level elements. So that's the color for first level elements. And then you have to know that first level elements are things like the bar colors in row color shading, alternative row shading in tables. And third level elements are things like, and because obviously there's lots of them, the second part of a gauge. Now, I'm not going to swap everybody with what does a first level element correspond to? What do Mac Microsoft mean by good, bad, neutral? All of this is documented in various web pages. You may find it useful. You may not. Personally, it's not something I use very much because you're completely stuck with the Microsoft allocation of the fact that they think that a good is going to be applied to the following seven or 10 attributes across everything that's there. <clears throat> if you don't like it, bad luck. So I did warn at the beginning, I was going to um, skip slightly over this one. And that is because there, it's not something I've seen people use an awful lot, the theme classes. I get the impression it was added when themes were in their infancy, but it, it just seems to have stayed where it is for at least a couple of years. But anyway, that's just me being opinionated. So we've got user interface to define very basic JSON, themes to push it a little bit, classes to push it a little bit further, text classes as part of these classes where you can say, oh, and this one can be pretty useful, actually, where you can say, I want to define everything used as a label, everything used as a title, everything used, as, well, you're limited to these choices. And there's a, I, can't, I haven't counted them, but it looks like there's about 10 of them. But the point being, with a small chunk of text in a JSON file, you can specify a whole load of preformatting for your Power BI report. I think it's probably time that I showed you what a JSON theme file looks like. Now, I'm not going to read through the definition of JSON. A lot of people will know this already. And if not, there are plenty of examples about JSON. All I will say is that the Power BI theme file JSON, or rather the interpreter inside Power BI Desktop for theme file JSON, <clears throat> is notoriously unforgiving. You get one corner in the wrong place and it goes off in a huff and refuses to load and you're there looking for the mistake. But anyway, this isn't meant to be a JSON course, so I presume everybody's had time during that last comment to, to look at what JSON is all about. So let's go and have a look at some theme files. Don't worry, we won't be spending hours and hours and hours, well, <laughs> minutes and minutes and minutes looking at uh, 
in-depth complicated JSON, but let me show you roughly the sort of thing you'll be dealing with. Okay, so here is, if anybody can't, if you, well, Leon, if you can't, ever can't see anything and I'm talking um, uh, like a university lecture in everybody's sleep, then please uh, let me know you can't see, but hopefully you can see a JSON theme file. And we can see, just to repeat, a name at the top, the data colors that go into the palette. palette. We've defined things like a background. That's the whole, that is the entire background of the uh, canvas. I don't know an awful lot of hex colors, but that means it's pure black. We've defined a foreground. And here we have some text classes where I've taken the shortcut to say, so that I don't have to define for 38 visuals, everything that's needed for titles, etc. I can just out of the box do some standard definitions of color, font face, font size. And then and then we get into the serious business of JSON theme files. I've chosen Notepad because it gives massive levels of indentation. And well, if you've never seen this stuff before, your eyes must be glazing over. Trust me, it is worth it. But it's down to several different levels. And I would never type this directly, copy, paste, use the existing files that you'll be uh, given by, or have been given by Leon. Essentially, you're looking for defining keywords like the background of the slide. And then from then on, you have all the options you're going to see in the formatting pane. Fortunately, several of them, well, most of them actually are the same. Let me, here's something, here's an easy one, image. So we're formatting the image. There's always this star at the next level of the JSON. And now you're probably recognizing words from the formatting pane. Lock aspect, border, visual header, etc., etc., etc. What a theme file is all about is saying for each element which corresponds to a card inside the formatting pane, these are the elements you can choose. You can set text, you can define hexadecimal colors, you can define, well, anything that's in the formatting. You will need to know, of course, which words to use. Fortunately, they're nearly always the same. Left, right, center for alignment. And most of them, um, well, sometimes they're case sensitive, sometimes they're not. I always go for lowercase. You've got a greater chance of it working. And on, off is true or false. So border sh uh, on becomes show false in the JSON. Now, I won't go through hundreds thousands of lines, but you can see if I just say this is how you format a text box. This is what a button looks like. Go down to this is what a clustered bar chart looks like, etc, etc. This is what theme files are. And yes, it is utterly mind numbing when you first uh, look at them and think, oh my goodness, how am I going to do that? But it's not as difficult as it looks. Um, Where I started. So, the theme file, the full theme file. I've covered most of this in the, in, well, all of this in the, everything I've said so far, specifically the last couple of minutes. So, very simple. This is the simplest possible theme file I could think of that actually worked. A name, colors, and background. Now, I hope this visual makes it a little bit clearer when I've been talking about the color palette. But by setting eight colors in an adjacent array here, I've set, not the first two as I mentioned you couldn't, but I've set the eight available colors in the theme palette here. If there's one thing you're ever going to do with themes, then set the colors. Because with that, you've done an awful lot of work already. Has to be in hexadecimal, but there is so much. There are so many websites that allow you to choose and define hexadecimal and if you've got RGB colors switch between them, it, it, it rapidly becomes not a problem. And the palette anyway, when you hover over a color, it gives you the 
hexadecimal or hex reference anyway. So if that's only going to be all you ever do in themes, you've still saved a lot of time. I mentioned that themes map to the format pane. Well, I chose the card as an example. This is the old formatting pane because um, I don't, not everybody's using, even if it came out three, four months ago, the, the, the modern formatting pane. But I just wanted to make the point that labels is data label. Category labels, and notice the, the uh, case casing of case application in the JSON the, uh, keyword. Word wrap, you see, same text, but different case and no spaces in the JSON. Just trying to make the point that at least there's a very large correspondence, not complete, but there's a large correspondence between what you write in a theme file and what you will see in whichever Power BI version you're using when it comes to the formatting. And as I mentioned earlier, but it's probably worth stressing again, if I, this is a screen cap, so I can't, but if I were to expand the data label, I'm looking at the content of the labels here inside the theme file. So it's a question of setting up the mapping and learning what are the keywords you need. Now, the structure of the theme file is a little bit strange at first sight. I'm used to it now after having done dozens of theme files for dozens of companies, but there's always the visual styles introduction. And then at a second level of JSON, you're saying what the actual element you're formatting is. And then we have this empty level. And then finally you get into the detail of all the elements that you're formatting. There's a lot of them. Yeah, making up 4,000 lines of JSON is a lot. So in the files that I'm sharing, what you will see is that I've broken down the various, I'll just give you a couple of examples, the various visuals into simple reduced, so I'm trying to make this full screen, JSON files. So here you have all the formatting for the area chart. So if you do decide that you want to use theme files, taking over a four and a how many thousand, four and a bit thousand lines of theme file is just too much. It, it, that, that's, uh, oh goodness me, you know, um, lead me to the wine glass stuff. Then you have in the handout, in the distributed file kit, uh, a theme file for every single different standard visual which can a be good if you own hopefully for you useful for you if you just want to format a few elements and b you have all the keywords that you need so you don't have to go and try and go through a dozen websites in order to find out what's the keyword if i'm building a json file to say the axis style is only show units and not decimals or whatever. So you have 30 odd, nearly 40, what I call attributes, JSON files that each will work in its own right. It's a completely, um, it's a fully constructed and working JSON theme file, but will, which will only format one particular element and you can cut and paste and reuse and change to your heart's content. And this gives you an idea of what theme files are. I'm not going to go through it line by line, getting really excited about uh, each individual keyword. No, not a good idea. Uh, uh, not desperately exciting at all. I've mentioned the fact that the visual name and the visual style name are not always the same. It's not called table or matrix. You'll see it's called table X and things like that. You don't always get an exact match between, as I have said, between the formatting section and card and subsection and the JSON keyword. That is the real pain. Um, 
but there are some advantages. In the JSON, the order really isn't important as to do you put card before the formatting for card, before the formatting for button, before etc. You put them in any order you want, any number you want. So at least at that level, it's really forgiving. How do you make things? Well, you steal them and use a text editor. Well, I do anyway. OK, you could probably use Visual Studio Code. You could, Well, you choose. And JSON formatters and JSON validators, websites or uh, extensions to well, VS Code, for instance, are worth their weight in gold. Specifically, as I mentioned, the, the Power BI desktop interpreter for the JSON theme file just says, doesn't work. It's, the dialogue essentially says computer says no. It's oh, appalling. So that's where a JSON validator is incredibly useful. It tells you, oh, it's because you forgot a comma at line 3742. Silly me, should have thought of that. You choose. I, I, I originally did massive theme files in Notepad, then moved on to Notepad++. Now I just use anything I can get my hands on that does the job. I've shown you. Um, a full theme. I'm not going to show people JSON formatters and theme editing tools. Um, but right now, I want to get, and I know it's a little bit uh, in depth into the theme file structure, but as I've been chattering for probably about, well, I'm scared to think how many minutes. Leon, are there any uh, questions you think need um, answering at this point? We do have a couple of questions coming in, um, Adam. We also have some fantastic feedback as well. So we have a Janice saying that this, thanks for this, this is absolutely um, gold. Um, we also have Mojo Jojo, um, who says, brilliant work, Adam, good vibes. And finally, John Sixler that says, this is a magic resource, great stuff. In terms of questions, uh, we have one question coming in from Ken Leuven. Hopefully I've pronounced that correctly, Ken. Um, and he asked particularly around colors. So for individuals that might not be too good in terms of choosing colors for themes, can you recommend any any sites or resources that may be able to help them? Okay, I like, a lot, I forget what percentage of males are not very good at colors. I mean, literally, um, the Daltonian spectrum. Uh, so I, I get reds and greens confused. And um, so I always get advice on colors. There, there are many, many resources out there. Uh, for me, color is part of design. And when it comes to design, I, I, I bow to the gurus out there, starting with Stephen Few, going through Edward Tufte, uh, Cole Lord, Netflix, Nuspama. Many people have probably read these authors. I, I go to the classics myself. There are many websites that talk about um, color and color use. And when it comes to the psychology of color, uh, Colin Ware is the, uh, the person to read. It's, uh, it's, neural in, it, well, it's neuropsychology more than anything, but it's absolutely fascinating on how we react to color because it goes beyond just, can I tell the difference between red and green, you know, the, traffic, the classic traffic light syndrome to um, the fact that in, let's say Western Europe, we're going to react to orange in one way, you could get a totally different reaction to orange in Polynesia, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if your color is so vast, all I can say is begin with the classics, but then dig on, on, on the web or in the bookshop. There are some fascinating articles out there explaining the use of colour, which and I can only point to to them and say these people know what they're talking about. Excellent. Thank you, Adam. And that probably brings us on nicely to our next question uh, from Andy Jocelyn. And he asks, do you have a theme for those that are colourblind, i.e. green and red? <laughs> um, I don't. Um, possibly because I'm not so good at colors. I tend to, well, I've only ever developed color themes for corporations where I have been told to use the shadings of the color of, of the, the same as the PowerPoints, you know, the, what's the word, the branding, branding, sorry. Um, so I'm afraid I don't. Uh, there may, I think there is a Microsoft one, isn't there? I've, 
There, there, there is indeed, but it could be a good challenge that, that those that take away um, some of the JSON resources that we posted in the chat for today's session, um, who will be the first one to come back to us uh, with, a, with, a, with a colorblind theme. Um, so a cha challenge set, should we say. Good one. I like the sound of that. <laughs> Excellent. And we do have another question coming yeah. in um, from Vlad. And Vlad asks, uh, can you set a default background image in a theme? Um, ooh. I don't think I don't think so is the answer. Uh, because it, I don't know. Top of my head, never done it. Uh, possibly because I avoid background images personally as a design thing. I don't no, there are some things you can't do in themes. I'll come on to those later. Oh, you stumped me on that one. I've never tried. I'm just thinking, oh, well, what? <laughs> I'm tempted to say I don't think so, uh, but I'd have to I'd have to test that. And the, because I've never seen it in the JSON structure, that means <laughs> taking apart a PBIX file and looking for the file name that you've used and seeing if you can force it into a theme. I um, I don't know. I suspect not, but I'd love somebody to prove me wrong. No problem at all. Um, and last question coming in from John Jenkins. Um, and he mentions, uh, well, he asks actually, have you had any issues with themes breaking the new formatting pane? Uh, he mentions that he's had a few problems with the with buttons particularly. I haven't, perhaps I've been lucky because I've certainly been using the new formatting pane since it was in preview and have been using themes day in, day out. And especially I did quite a lot of work in the first quarter for a company that was heavily into presentation. Uh, and it was all theme based and I didn't have a single problem. So no, no I haven't. But then, um, you know, uh, better to be lucky than wise. And I have, I've obviously been lucky, but I'll keep an eye out for that. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Adam. That's all of the questions for now. Thanks very much, Leon. So I want to move on. I'm just, I'm just checking the time. Right. I've only got about a quarter now. So let's look at some of the aspects of themes because I want to get on. I'm not going to go through visual by visual. I want to get on to what I think are the two really interesting things, which are color and cascading colors and the generic elements. So just to explain very high level view of the theme file because it can be pretty daunting. I've explained the top where you have a name and the data colors. Then you can have classes for some high level scattering of, of um, definitions. And then you go into something called the generic visual style, which is really, really interesting. This is where themes turbocharge. So I'm going to go straight into this to make sure we don't get, we don't run out of time because the visual style is when you go into this hierarchy, abstruse as it may be, it says star, star, whereas all the others say things like table X, which means table, star. The fact that I've, you've gone in through this star, star level means that you've said total's true, the label is total, the font color is, the back color is, etc. For what? Well, for absolutely everything. So by doing a generic style, you have said whenever the keyword is total, which could be in a table or a matrix, possibly something else to come in, you know, when Microsoft released something else, you haven't had to define it twice. You set it once and it will apply to anything you can, anything that can adopt and be defined by this keyword. Now, okay, that just covers a table, but supposing you're generically defining the word background, um, sorry, you're using the keyword background to say this is the color. You've just set the background for 38 visuals, 30, however many, with one simple definition and without repeating blah, blah, table background, matrix background, button background, et cetera, et cetera, 30 N times. So that for me is one of the most amazing hidden virtues of themes. Even if you never use the remaining 3,700 odd lines, you can do an absolutely fabulous theme file that stops at the generic level, doesn't go into specific objects, and will still format beautifully and standardize totally your, pretty nearly totally, your entire dashboard. But 
back to the basics, we've got a hierarchy of define classes if you use them. I don't. Then define anything generic because it saves you redefining it further down unless, and this is where it gets so good, you want to override. So if you set something at generic level, great, you've applied it a dozen times, but just for one visual that uses this particular uh, attribute, you want to override it. So you can do, as you can see in this example. So that's where I get really excited about themes, the fact that you can be generic about them. And as I say, 300 odd lines of JSON as opposed to over 4,000 can do 95% of your formatting. So probably worth bearing in mind if you start getting into this. So a few examples going round the clock on this one, because I wanted to show you how the cast, how the hierarchy works. Here I've set something with a text class. I mean, the colors are ridiculous and horrible, but this is to make the point that we've said label is in Arial with this particular hex um, reference. So it's all vaguely red. And then the next label down, only for anything that's a total, we've said override this, please, which means that anywhere, anything that uses a total, yes, that means matrix and table, but I wanted a simple example, will override. You can see that the table here and the matrix both have the total like this. And then at the lowest level, you'll have to trust me that we've at, we've done the complete definition of a table where we said for the table, override the to total. Well, it was a bit like what we saw earlier where we overrode the total here. So you have a complete hierarchy. So you don't need to do everything over and over again. If setting something once is enough, you've done it. If you need to be a little bit more uh, precise using the generic, the next level down, do that and only override when you're at the lowest possible level, when you absolutely have to, rather than doing it 30, 40 times. I've already talked about generic themes because I want to make sure I sell this concept before we run out of time. This really is theme heaven, nirvana for, for theme development, because anything that is shared inside, anything that's the same by shared, I mean anything inside the formatting pane that is the uses the same card, expandable pop-up box, with words like, well, <laughs> border, shadow, tooltip, blah, blah. You can set them once and apply it every time. You've saved thousands of lines of JSON and risk of error. <laughs> Elements that are common to a range of visuals. So it's not just the, the very simplistic shared elements, those that are in the, the, the what is it, in new formatting pane in the, I can't even remember what it's called, the shared or the common, general, general formatting. But anything that's common to a range of visuals, you've got x-axis, y-axis used in how many charts, data labels, plot error, legends used in how many charts, you can define the legend style once at the generic level, and it will apply to every single visual unless you override it at a lower level. Congratulations, you've just saved another 500 lines of Jason. Now, <clears throat> final point, because this for me is the other real biggie if you're doing complex theme files. And I was fairly proud of having found this myself. Uh, you know, you know. <laughs> well, anyway, discovered this by taking apart, as I say, PBIX files. Now, most theme files I've ever seen put in hex references, hexadecimal references to color. Great. But in four and a bit thousand lines of JSON, you can have the same hex code used dozens, if not hundreds of times. And a change means, yes, you guessed it, global replace. And then you find you want to replace one by another, but you're replacing, that makes duplicates. And then so you have to replace one with intermediate, change the second, then change the first intermediate back. Oh, it's horrible. So. Imagine people have been reading the slide while I've been saying this, but you can cascade the colors. So once you've set the top six colors, remember you can't change the first two columns, but you can reference them. You can then, instead of saying color is um, hash or sharp, 
no, 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 no. You can say new. I'm, I'm instead I'm going to use expression theme data color color ID. Yes, it's for both, but it works. I'm saying nine. Nine means zero based. Don't ask why. Up. I'm going to the final column, and I want it to be fifty percent, which is the bottom one. And if I change that to not minus 0 0.5, but just 0 0.6, it would be 60%. It would be this top one. And you can choose any percentage, any shading you like. Now, I know I'm getting really geeky and abstruse here, but this is the most amazing time saver you've ever seen. OK, the setting. You've, you're, you've set up your themes, and you've done a lot of rework, so you're now using the cascading colors. Perhaps it's something you've done for a client. And the client has said, mm, yeah, but we're, we're rebranding. We're going from uh, orange to hey, another color, you know, a fetching shade of, of, uh, of pink, say. And you're there thinking, oh, my goodness, I've got several variations on a theme of orange in the file. I'm going to change them all. Oh, oh. save me. And of course, it, it's all, you know, you, you're given a fixed price for this as a, as a well-meaning consultant, and it's, you're going to be up all night. Sorry, giving away trade secrets. No, not if you've done it with cascading colors. You change the color reference once, the top where it's defined for the um, palette. Sorry, that sound in the background is our 17-year-old cat who's got cat's Alzheimer's or, or Alzheimer's for cats. He, he forgets what day, well, he forgets what time it is, but when he wakes up, but, uh, nobody's torturing uh, poor animals, believe me. Anyway, back to colors. You change the color once at the top of the JSON file, and because you referred to the color ID and the percentage, in other words, the column and then the shading, your entire theme changes in a split second. No search replace, no getting it wrong, everything is pointing back to the original color setting at the very, very top. Let me flash back several slides so we can, there we are. So you've changed the color setting up here and instantly it's cascaded down through every single reference to that color in your theme file. <clears throat> and you show this to the client, open a can of applause and go to the Bahamas on there, the gold that they shower you with or, or whatever. So two things that I really would suggest that if you're getting into themes, you look at sooner rather than later. Firstly, this concept of generic themes, and I've given you some examples in the, the, the zip file of themes, and then the concept of cascading colors. Yes, it's a bit more long-winded to write extra blah, 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 blah. And remember, it's a zero-based reference and what percentage you want. But the day you change the source reference, you have saved yourself so much time and possibly so much pain. It is brilliant. And then, of course, as a final idea, I imagine most people would have thought of this one, uh, the buy one, get one free in themes is, of course, if you develop the theme, which is the real hard work, in 30 seconds, you can attach this to a Power BI file that you then save as a Power BI template that's where you could put the image as the background in, for instance. If it, well, at least if it's only on one page, you then duplicate. But don't forget this one, because it can be incredibly useful to have a template with logos and basic structures. You might have developed uh, uh, background areas, uh, shadings, well, anything you like, depending on your corporate or personal approach to how you're actually building the presentation. But include the theme in the template. It is, it makes it so hard to go wrong. Um, well, the demo, I won't actually skip to a demo of that. That's just a save as, choose template, as attach your theme, save as, choose template as the file type, you're done. I mean, it, you, it takes longer to do than it does to explain it. But probably not worth, it's probably worth remembering, not forgetting. So takeaways. I would maintain that there are massive time savings when you're creating dashboards. Once you've been through the J curve, not to say the pain of getting theme files to work. Corporate standards then are, especially if you're using a theme file in a template, just apply out of the box. Every time one of your users 
creates a table or a chart, it follows the color the, the, the color scheme. But the only thing it one of the few things it can't do is actually say what are the different shadings in charts unless you're just following the classic Power BI takes palette color one two three four five and goes through. And it's very easy to reapply a change to a theme file. You just say to users, what you do in your own file is change the theme file and then apply it just as you saw me do at the very start. Okay, there is a big upfront investment in time. The learning curve of mapping all the keywords at the different levels is beyond arduous. And yeah, clunky development environment. It may be that I'm just no good at JSON and so I've chosen an appalling way of doing it. But um, I've yet to see something that allows you to develop perfect themes. So uh, back to the text editor of your choice. Well, uh, here is my totally gratuitous plug before we get to the remaining questions. Having spent hours writing these books, I thought I'd show everybody they exist, but that's enough to be going on with. So, any more questions, please? Fantastic, Adam. Absolutely fantastic session. And I have just posted a link as well um, to all of your authored works um, on Amazon for our users to go and select from as well. Um, so please do feel free. If you do want to become a mastermind um, at Themes, and I suggest you do, um, then please do feel free to go and look at that link um, and to get some of the questions. Now, um, with that being said, Adam, we do have uh, a couple of questions coming in. Uh, one coming in from Anthony uh, Catella, and they ask, can you code up hex codes for specific dimension values in the theme file? I'm, I don't understand what is meant, what you mean, Anthony, by specific dimension values. Do you mean if different tables have different... Um, is there any way you could ex just expand on that a little bit, please? I'm, I'm afraid I don't understand. No problem at all. If we could expand on that, that would be great. I've taken it to be um, the column attributes, as you, as you mentioned there, for different dimensions. But Anthony, if you could come back into the chat and expand on that. Ah, oh, if you mean fantastic. where you're selecting the column and then saying, oh, this color applies, unfortunately, no, because the column name depends on the field name. And the field name could be anything between every file. And that's actually what in the PBIX file Power BI uses. So you can't say my second column is blue and my third column is green because Power BI doesn't unfortunately remember in a say, table that you're numbering the columns. It uses the actual names in, in the PBIX to reference them. So things like that can't be defined in a theme file as far as I know. Thank you very much. And Anthony has just come back just to say that, yes, as, as we as we mentioned, particularly from a, for a country perspective, so a country dimension, if each country needed to be a specific colour. I don't think so is the answer. I mean, I'm never saying no, because there might be a, some wonderful way of doing it. But in my experience, no, I, I, I couldn't see that happening. No problem at all. And just to, just to go back to the background image, if, if we can, Adam, because there has been some ongoing conversations within the chat um, as we've been going through the session. Um, and what's been alluded to is is the base 64 encoding um, of an image and directly referencing that as a, as, as a string uh, within within the theme file. Um, Gary Alwyn um, has come back and and Chris Webb, um, the guru, um, has a blog post on this as well and, and has mentioned some limits when working with large images to be aware of um, but absolutely kudos to everybody in the community because there was an ongoing conversation in regards to an answer to that um, and it is possible by using a base 64 encoded image so thank you very much from that perspective uh, we'll go on to our next question uh, which comes in from john jenkins and he asks have you been able to deal with custom fonts specifically we found that a user needs to have a font installed locally for the font to render correctly in the online service I have met this problem uh, with, um, well, I had a similar question at a, a user group somewhere in the north of England, uh, aka just up the road from me. And the problem that we found was that um, custom, custom fonts were a problem because if you load into the Power BI service and the font isn't there, it doesn't send the font up to the service. So 
you're limited to the classic fonts. At least we did fight this one and were unable to, other than on the, a Power BI server where you could load the font on the Power BI server and have it rendered from there, couldn't get custom fonts into the Power BI service because you have no control over that. So for me, custom fonts are a problem, but that's specific to Power BI. That's more Power BI than themes. As, again, as far as I know, the usual caveat, if I haven't fought it for hours, well, I've fought this one for a few hours, so I'm reasonably confident. But uh, if, if someone has a solution, I'm always ready to learn. That's the fun of getting all the feedback. This is the joys of, um, of Power BI as well, isn't it? Um, yes. Especially with the monthly release cadence, um, there's always there's always something to learn. Um, with that being said, that's the that's all of the questions that we've had come through so far. Um, so I'm just going to pose you a question, if you don't mind, Adam. Um, and what springs to to mind for me is: Do you have any recommendations on source control of these of these files at all, the theme JSON files? Put them into GitHub. I mean, they're text files. <laughs> they 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 work beautifully with. Uh, or VS Studio, um, VS Code, Git, um, because they're not part of, they're not PBIX, which is, as we all know, a tremendous pain. So they're just text files. So I source control them, VS Code, Git, done. Excellent, thank you. I just wanted to confirm that and clarify because it's something that's always not really discussed in terms of dealing with what well, we obviously know the CICD elements of Power BI as it is, um, but just keen to touch on the source control aspect there as well. Uh, we do have one last question by looks of it coming in from from Gary, um, and he asks: uh, Is your theme does your theme book have a PDF version available to it? Uh, yes, uh, on the A well, the A Press is the publisher. Uh, they're, they're a pretty big organisation, but yes, they do um, PDF versions. So I just go to the A Press site, and you can you know um, they will seize your credit card with unalloyed glee and uh, give you the, the PDF in exchange. Indeed. And like like I say, I would definitely recommend um, reading through Adam's works because, as you can see here, if you if you invest the upfront time um, in putting together theme files, um, not only can they be reusable um, in other organizations with a little bit of, obviously, customization, um, you can take them to other organizations and rebuild them, but also you can give this out to the business and know that you have an element of governance across uh, your template files in all new reports that are being built as well. So absolutely amazing techniques for standardization yes excellent well adam um i will thank you very much um for being with us um like i say it's been a very interactive session from a chat perspective there's been a lot of ideas bouncing off um based on the information you shared with us today absolutely um fantastic subject and really appreciate you joining us today it's been my pleasure i hope everybody finds this useful and if you are stuck on something well you can ping me on linkedin or email and say i'll try and reply <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much. And also, thank you very much um, to our community for once again joining us for a chance to get together and learn together on Power BI. And the strength of the community really did come across in terms of being able to answer um, some of the questions that came out of today's session as well. Um, always, this session has been brought to you in association with Onyx Data. Um, so please do stay safe. And you could have been anywhere in the world, but you've been here with us at the Microsoft Power BI UK User Group. Take care and see you all soon.